Hi everybody and welcome back to the Franklin Sewing Machine shop here in Birmingham. My name's Lucy, I'm the shop manager here and we're going to be looking at the new Benina L890. This is the combined cover stitch and overlocker with fully digital functions. It's pretty amazing. So we're going to get it out the box um, and have a quick run through just to show you kind of some of its key features and the things that are really going to help you get the most out of overlocking and cover stitching. So, um, well, let's see what we get in here first of all. It's quite a big box. It has got some great detail on exactly where everything is kept because there's quite a lot of bits and bobs in here. So um, it's important to have a check before you um, get rid of any polystyrene. But best to keep your box as well, just in case it does need to come back for servicing. So we've got a lovely cover, um, proper kind of Benina canvas cover for you. Um, or manual and stitch cards. So some of the stitch cards for these are really, really good actually to give you a really great overview of um, everything that it does because it can do a lot. Power cable, foot pedal, proper Benina foot pedal as well, the really nice one with the um, heel tap function. We've got our waist tray. That'll be the um, cover guard for turning it into a cover stitch machine. So we'll have a look at attaching those also comes with a knee lift, a set of threads and the free arm cover as well. Lift this bit out. And then there is a section just down here. Yeah, so we've got the, uh, yes, yeah, so we take out the accessory boxes first of all. These have got storage for all the um, additions that um, are coming with the machine, which we'll have to go through. And then the machine has to come out, which is, it is quite heavy. Oh. Okay. Try and remove that piece of polystyrene. That's the support for the center. And then we can take out the table because we also get the extension table with the machine too. So we've got quite a bit going on here. So we'll get it all laid out. We'll get the machine plugged in and ready to go. And then we'll have a run through and show you what it's like in action. So now we've uh, got it all set up with the um, all the bits of tape and everything off. We're just gonna go through some of the accessories and um, just showing you how they kind of go on and off the machine. And then um, obviously, get it in action. So um, you've got a couple of uh, table like, options for the table because it comes out the box with the free arm actually exposed and you can then fill in this gap um, with either the small kind of uh, free arm filler here which slides in just to fill that area or you can put on the large table so which slides on in the same way you've just got to make sure you get it all lined up at the back first and then onto the front of the machine gives you a lovely grand sewing space. So we'll probably leave that one on. I think I'd like to stitch with that one today. And then the other bits that it comes with, your table for converting it into a cover stitch machine, um, which we'll add on later. Um, a knee lift, which slots into the front to be able to raise and lower the uh, presser foot with the traditional Benina knee lift. Um, we've got the waist tray which clips onto the front as well to gather all those bits that are being trimmed off in the overlocking mode and inside the accessory box we've got everything you need to maintain and use the machine so that includes spare needles the kind of spool nets which are really handy for um, keeping your, your, your threads running off really smoothly also the anti-vibration cones spool caps as well um, a little guide that goes on to the, um, uh, the, the knife cover, which, which is the one that comes supplied with it when it's um, out the box. Um, some oil and the um, kind of manual looper threader as well, the lo looper wire, which is obviously just, just in case and for um, decorative threads as well. Pop those back in there and you can store room for everything in here, which is great. Pop that to one side. We'll keep the guide on. We've also got on this um, combined cover stitch model in the tin here, um, because this has got the digital touchscreen, the touchscreen stylus, the Benina stylus, we'll have that out as well. 
and um, a specific cover stitch foot. So this is um, a really lovely slim foot for um, when you're in the cover stitch only mode. You've also got um, a little kind of gauge, which has also um, got this little end here, which um, is for kind of bringing your threads forward in the cover stitch mode, which we'll look at later. And also your little torque screw for changing the needles. And again, room for kind of any other feet that you may purchase, because there are additional um, accessories that you can get for, for the, this um, new model as well. And another great little thing that it's got is the kind of quick reference guide. So this chart um, explains everything, It's instead of the big, big manual, which also comes with it, um, just a little bit of a quick overview, um, and as well as an overview of all the stitches as well and the numbers of them. So you've got your chain stitches, combo, cover stitches, as well as all the overlocking stitches, and a kind of troubleshooting and things as well. But we'll go through that on the digital um, capabilities on the screen too. Right, so that's all of our little bits. I'll just pop the, I'll show you how this guide pops on, which is quite handy. This goes, kind of slides onto the knife cover there. So we can, which I think is a really nice little thing you've got on this. You've also got it on the um, 850 as well. Um, nice little touch that. I'm just gonna remove the, the tape, this waste tray for a sec, because we're gonna be having the doors on and off, um, opened and closed and things. So we'll turn it on, and this is the settings that um, the machine like comes when, when it's out the factory because with the sample it's the actual the combined stitch which is a um, five thread safety seam using the overlocking and the chain stitch and so when we turn it on there we go there's the switch that's what its default setting is so we'll just give it a quick run on that and then we can go through some of the um, extra stitches but let's see it in action once it turns on So it did come with a set of um, kind of this, this grey thread on there, but obviously it was tied at the back just for the factory sample. So we've actually re-threaded the machine in the kind of corresponding colours just to um, show you how this, this runs. So we'll just um, get it going. It does make a few little noises. <laughs> And so that's our five thread safety stitch. So now we'll get it um, set up to show you all the other things that it can do. So we're going to have a quick look at the overview of the screen that's actually on here because um, everything is digitally controlled on the L890, um, everything including the differential feed, stitch length, um, we're used to having kind of knobs and dials to actually adjust but on this model everything's done digitally so if we were to go to the stitch length and differential feed you'll see that we've got these automatic settings that are on here at the moment, we can adjust those by moving the sliders, um, if you want to go back to kind of where it was before just touch it and it'll go back to the default setting. Um, as with kind of some of the bigger Benina machines, when that is yellow, that does mean a change has been made. So you can always see that on your screen at any time. And there is also a little video. Um, if you're unsure about anything, um, it shows you exactly when you would change the differential feed. So we'll see the fabric there is coming out very wavy. So it's going to suggest an adjustment for it to increase the differential feed in order to smooth out that stitch. There's a lot of help built into this machine and it is designed to get the best for you um, for your cover stitching and overlocking. If we just go out of there then and back onto the main screen. So this is a stitch that's selected at the moment. Um, across the top we, uh, we've got all of the different tensions for the actual um, threads that are engaged to do this stitch. It's not showing us all of them. So um, we've got the chain looper, the CL, LL for lower looper, UL for upper looper, LN for left needle and RC for right chain. So um, you'll see we haven't got the right needle or the left chain or anything built in there because they're not engaged on this particular stitch. So it will only give you the information for those particular threads. If we were to select these then it opens up all the um, tensions and these are all automated at the moment um, for that particular stitch. There is a sewing advisor that we'll have a look at as well, um, which can actually adjust, make adjustments to all of these things for your particular fabric. So if we close that down, there is um, a little kind of assessment, a stitch optimization um, with this little thumb, thumbs up symbol here. So if you have a problem with your stitch and you're not sure, definitely go into this one because it can actually 
give you some help as to um, how to fix it essentially. So if your stitch looks like these kind of pictures which are the thumbs down and you're not kind of quite getting what, what, how, how you want it to be, if you select that kind of problem, for example, change stitch needle thread creates a loop on the wrong side of the fabric, if you click that it'll actually give you different um, options to actually go through, basically troubleshooting for your stitch, which is really handy. Go back here. Um, you can actually go to the, the thumbs up and it will show you exactly how it should look, which is also really useful to see. You've got your speed here as well because it is a fast machine, as I think you saw in our first um, bit of stitching that we did. So you can actually reduce that on screen there, um, which I might do to about a thousand because that's kind of what I'm used to. <laughs> Close that one down there. So um, we're going to set it up for um, doing because at the minute we've got this combination stitch on. So I'd like to show you just how it is to go through the guided mode to set it up into the um, four thread overlock, which is a really common stitch that we all use. So when you have made some changes to a stitch, it will actually ask you to, um, do you want to save it? Because you do, you can save stitch settings. Um, in this instance, we're not going to. I'm going to go to the overlock folder, and this will show me all the overlock stitches that are available, um, which include all the rolled hems, which we'll go through in a bit. If you're unsure of what any of these actually are, there's the question mark, which is you, um, kind of the help icon that you have on all the Benina digital models. So now I can pick a stitch here and it'll tell me what it is. So that's the three thread flat lock from Narrow. Close that down. We're going to look at stitch number one, the four thread overlocks. So we're going to just literally follow the steps as um, depicted on the screen to go through this guided mode of how to set up the machine. So first of all, it's telling us to lift the presser foot and scroll to the next step. These steps are so simple. Um, it actually knows which threads we need to unthread for this setting as well. So it might not be all of them. So um, because we've, we've or this, this stitch at the minute, the four thread, five thread safety seam is already kind of built into it. it. That's what it's set at at the moment. So it knows we just need to undo a few of them. So literally going to unthread those. There is videos for all of those as well. So I'm just gonna do that. Our one isn't purple, it's pink, but that doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna trim it there and get the doors open as well just to get inside the machine which we haven't actually had a look at yet Ooh. pop that guy there as you can see there's also loads of storage inside here as well which i forgot to mention earlier but it does mean you've got all your additional accessories as well for um, maintenance and um, threading of the machine including the needle threader which we'll have a look at shortly and spare needles so um need to trim it off at the top and it's also asking me to trim it off at the bottom as well so that's our pink thread here and then to gently pull it through which I've cut it off a little bit ah uh, there it is is that it there okay let's just gently pull that through so that's unthreaded the chain looper I'll close that down we also want to unthread the left needle so we do it in exactly the same kind of way that's the green thread, so we'll trim it off from there. And at the needle there. And again, gently pull it through. And that's why it asks you to actually um, lift up the presser foot because that will disengage any tension that's applied to these threads. And the right chain as well, so that's the yellow. So we've still got our loopers engaged, that's fine. I'll just trim these bits off the end. So that's our red and our blue threads are still in action. All right, so let's tell the machine that we've done all that. So we'll go to the next stage, which is just here. Attach the presser foot C11, which is supplied with the machine. That's the one that's actually already on and we can see that just at the back there on the foot. So we don't need to actually change that. Foot pressure, it should be set at four. So let's see whereabouts that is. That's actually on top of the machine and that is already at its default setting of four. So we don't need to adjust that either, but it's a very easy lever to move around. Next is to add in the correct needles. 
so um, and remove ones that we we don't need any longer so i'm just going to use the um this little Torx screwdriver again there is a video on how to do that as well that's very self-explanatory so i'm just going to go for removing the right chain and i'm just going to pop that into the back here into the right needle and tighten that one up you've got a little window on all these machines which shows you where the needle actually is at the top there so you can check that it's in the highest position um, and I'm sure that it'll explain that on the video on screen as well oh yes that is the we've got the swing out foot which does make it a lot easier on this model to actually um, change your needles a bit more room around where the overlocker is but for the cover stitch that's definitely going to be useful okay on to the next stage so we want to make sure that the knife is engaged again there is a video to say where that is and it's actually a lever right at the side here this is where having the table on probably wasn't the best idea but i'll just take that off so it's um just at the side and you kind of slide it forwards and backwards in order to raise and lower the knife which i'm sure you'll be able to see but we want it engaged so we can actually see it raising and lowering there so that's the way we want it engaged Let's pop the table back on. And also the cutting width. Um, this is a pretty much a default setting that it's set on at the front here. So again, if you're unsure where any of these dials are, the video will always show you. So this is the one right at the front here. So that just needs to be at six, which it already is. On to the next stage. Honestly, anybody could thread this up. I think it'd be ideal for people who are totally, totally new to it. It means because you, if you follow this, these settings, then you can't go wrong. Um, it's now asking us to put the knife cover on, which is actually what we already have engaged on there. So this is for when you are actually having, if you've got the knife engaged, then you always have the knife cover. So it's just as an example, showing us how we take away the um, chain looper um, cover instead, the, the, the cover stitch table and also activate the upper looper but as we do already have that threaded we can safely say that is activated but the dial for that is just down here if we need to adjust it okay on to the next step it's also ensuring that you don't have the um looper thread the top thread converter actually engaged so just make sure that's disengaged but again from the setting we have previously that is all good these kind of settings because this is the fully guided mode it is literally spoon feeding it to you, but um, with, we can have a look at the expert mode, which will show things in a bit more of a, you know, not, not as many steps. You can kind of skip through a little bit, so you don't have to go through this each time. But for beginners, as I said, it's absolutely ideal. Rolled hem position set to zero, which it is set to, oh, sorry. Uh, no, zero there, that's the, that's the one there. Um, the micro thread control also at zero so both of these are at the o and the zero on their respective levers so that's already set as it needs to be now it's the threading which is the fun part and um, because we've got the air threading system on this model so we need to engage our loopers which if we just snap them together using this dial lever here. You may just need to um, turn the wheel to get them into the correct position. And then we are going to do the lower looper, which that one is actually already engaged. The upper looper is already engaged. So it's the needles that we need to do. Um, we could show you the air threading again. Let's just do that because it's, even though they are engaged, let's do it properly. So I'll just trim these off here. Pull those bits through. So with the air threading, I'll just pop the video on to show you. Once those loopers are engaged with the dial there, it's a case of bringing the thread through the guides down the front of the machine where they already were from the original placement of them. And then popping them into this threading um, port here. And the actual um, air threading as showing on the, the video is on the foot pedal. So if we present the thread here, and I'm just going to tap in a teeny bit. Oh, 
sometimes threads can be a bit wayward. We do just need to pull in quite a little bit more excess than what is actually pictured on there because this is just a representation but you need enough that's going to go through the whole system and because it's a big machine it has a little way to go. There we go, that's our lower looper and it does actually show at the end of the video that it needs to go over the top of that upper looper. And then we've got our lower looper thread. So it's just at that point there, it shows you to go over the top. So as I said, you really can't go wrong. Upper looper, again, down the front of the machine. Plenty of excess so it can get through the system. Ooh. And then into the looper there. Ooh. So I'm literally just pressing on the foot pedal and not getting it into the hole. <laughs> there we go. There we go. And it shoots through. And that thread again, as I'm saying on the video, is going right to the back. So now we can go on to the needle threads. Right needle, which we've got here as our green thread coming from that top guide. And these ones, because they haven't been engaged yet, we will need to put them into the tension discs, which you do need to click into place there. And as long as it's going into there and then coming through, that's exactly where it needs to be. Following these symbols for the needle, which on these ones is like a solid kind of um, half moon shape. And then we're going into the far right hand side and clipping it into that right hand side part there. And then I'm going to get the needle threader into our needle threader with the little kind of um, rhino horn, I call it, pointing in the air. Slide down gently as you feel it come to a natural stop. And then when it gets to the eye of the needle, it will poke it through. Then use that hook on the end to scoop it through and underneath the foot as well. And again with the left needle, you can hear that click there. And following the yellow path, again with the kind of solid half moon. And through the eye. I do love the Benina needle threaders, these little handheld ones, they're fantastic. And through the back as well. And once we've actually told the machine that we've done all of those things, we'll go off that screen, press the tick, it will remind us to actually open up the, the looper ports there so that they're not actually um, engaged any longer because otherwise the machine won't run. We can put up our doors and I'm pretty sure that this will just be set up for kind of a standard thread at the, um, kind of material at the moment so we'll just try it on our uh, bit of calico. Lower the foot at the back Perfect. This is the stitch should be. Looks exactly like the picture, which is what we want. <laughs> right, so then we'll move on to trying it onto um, a rolled hem. Now we're going to go through the um, guided mode again, just to set it up to be a rolled hem. Um, I mean, uh, Somebody who uses overlockers will probably know those kind of settings, but it's really great on here that it just takes you through everything. So let's have a look at that to see how we get into the rolled hem. So we're just where we were before. So we're going to then go to the stitch um, icon at the top right. And it's going to ask us if we want to save that stitch. As I said, you can if you need to for that setting. I'm going to go to the overlock section again and then pick my rolled hem. Now, which kind of style? And let's just go to the question mark and check so oh yeah that was the narrow seam um and which one was that three thread rolled hem so that's the one that we want to actually um select so i'll say i want that one please 
And so again, it's going to go through these motions, um, but we shouldn't have to one. We only got to one thread, one of them. So that should pick that up on the next step. Yeah. So it's just saying to remove that left needle, um, which we know how to do that now. So um, just go through that motion. Trim that off there and off here and then pull it through gently. Also do you need to actually take that needle out. So I'm just going to grab the screwdriver again to unscrew there. And you can keep your needles um, in the little needle keeper here for future use. Next step, now we've done that. C11 foot, which is the one we already have on. A lot of these settings are going to be the same, so you can kind of skip through these quite quickly and you'll get used to what settings are for which stitches. Foot pressure, that stays the same. Oh, this is where it will tell you to actually remove the needle, obviously. So you just a double check to make sure you do only have that right needle in, which we have. Activate the knife, we already have that. Adjust the cutting width. So this is a different um, uh, thing we're going to have to change because it was set on six before. So we're actually going to reduce that to 5.5 down here. Next step, um, the knife cover, we already have. Upper looper, already activated. The upper looper converter, already don't have that on there. And so this is some, another adjustment that we do have to make. Um, putting the lever here to the R. Very easy. Then it's going to say to thread these needles, which we do actually already have threaded. So we don't actually need to re-thread the machine. It is just removing that one. So as long as you know you've got them all engaged, you don't actually have to re-thread from the start for every single stitch if you know that they're already um, actually threaded up. And press our tick, so we're at that screen now. This may have made some adjustments it's, um, to the stitch length. It's now on 1.2. Um, differential feeder stayed the same, um, but we'll see if that's suitable for this fabric. Um, so it's just going to give that a run through. So you do want to be having trimming some off on the rolled hem. So smooth using this machine. And so that's our lovely neat rolled hem showing us, yeah, that's that's how I would expect it to be. You can compare that with um, the um, stitch optimization on screen if you wanted to and uh, troubleshoot it if you needed. But I'm happy with that. And on a really fine fabric, that would look fantastic. You may want to bring a stitch in a little bit um, to give a real fine satin stitch, but these are all things that you learn as you overlock on a variety of fabrics. So um, we'll have a look at the changing it now over to a cover stitch, which involves quite a few more changes, but um, in the guided mode, it's really super simple. So now we're going to set the machine up for cover stitching. Um, this being a combined model, it's got a massive range of stitches. So this is, takes quite a few um, adjustments to actually turn it into a cover stitch machine. So we're going to talk through them all with the guided mode and it makes it super easy. So on the screen, if we select on the top, top right with the stitches, again, we don't need to save that one right now. And we go to cover. They've got a few options here. There's not as many as with overlocking. Um, we're just going to select something fairly straightforward. Um, I'm going to do the three thread. Let's thread them all up. The three thread cover stitch. This is a wide cover stitch utilizing all of the cover stitch stitches. So because we're in that guided mode, we're just going to go through it as it tells us. So raising up the presser foot, unthreading the following thread paths. So that's our Needle, upper looper and lower looper. I'm just going to trim them all off at once to make it easy at the top. So that's the green, the blue and the red. So actually now the whole machine will be unthreaded. And again, if I just pull these out gently, they will all come out. Lovely. See how long those thread paths have got to go. <laughs> that's just due to the size of the machine. Right, so 
next step. This is where we do need to attach a different foot. So we're going to go for the foot C13, which was in our little box. Um, so I'll just grab that out of here. This is because it's cover stitch only that we need this one instead. So you can always watch a little video on exactly how to remove this the foot we have on currently. We've already got the press foot raised. So there's a little trigger at the back. And as soon as that's squeezed, squeezed in, it's dropped off. So C13 foot here, which is just on the side there, then goes on underneath. And we're aiming to get the um, presser foot onto um, this little bar here, onto the shank, if you can see. And it's actually saying on the video to lower that onto it. And as we can see, it's clipped on now. Lovely. So it's really easy to change the feet. We'll pop that back in the box. Foot pressure to four, but that's actually stayed where it has done the whole time. This is where now we've got to insert our cover stitch needles. So um, we want to remove the left needle and actually put in three needles into the cover stitch area here. So I'll just grab the four, undo that one there. So I'm just going to swing the foot out to give me a bit more room. They use the same needles on the overlocking side and the cover stitch side, so you can just literally slot that one in to the next hole. Just get my one from my little needle keeper that I popped over there and pop in the middle one. And then I'm going to have to just pop one out of the packet. for the far left hand side. Oh, there's our hole. Oh, I might just need to undo that screw slightly just to, if your needle doesn't feel like it's going up all the way, you can just undo the screw a little bit and that's pro normally the problem. There we go. So you'll see they're sitting um, in a kind of, getting longer it seems as they go along and that's exactly as they need to be. Pop the foot back into position. And let's move to the next step. We want to deactivate the knife for cover stitching. We're not actually going to be using any cutting distance at all. So I'm just going to slide our slider as we did, as we saw earlier on, away from us. And that means that the knife has now disappeared from the actual um, stitching area. It does say to adjust the cutting width to um, five, which is kind of, um, must be to do with the positioning of the table, so we'll do that as well. And on to the next step. Attach the cover stitch insert. So this is the table instead of the actual knife cover. So we'll bring this down. This squeezes in and pulls away. Pop that in one of our storage boxes and I put the table cover in here. So just on the video, let me just check which way around it goes. It's this way, I believe. Nope, am I doing it right? <laughs> there we go, yeah. So it fills that gap and then it kind of clips on over there. Perfect. Oh, there's a couple more. One more step I think we need to do before we can actually put that back up is deactivating the upper looper. So the upper looper we've had engaged the entire time for the previous um, stitches that we were doing, which involved overlocking. So um, if we go to the video, so this is the upper looper um, and it's literally turning that down there. Oh, pushing the foot pedal. There we go. So now that's disengaged. On to the next step. No setting of the upper looper converter required, so that's explanatory enough. Setting the rolled hem position to zero. And then these are the threads that we need to actually engage with the machine for the um, cover stitching, which are going to be a bit of a different thread path to anything we've done before. So I'll just... Oh! <laughs> Let me just go to those settings again. I could show you then on the show you the little videos because they are a different thread path. 
the chain looper um, we're going to um, use the air threading port for the chain looper so that involves um, making sure we've got that engaged and if I touch that there we go so the ports are engaged I'm going to be taking our pink thread clipping into the bag Again, make sure you've got enough excess in that tray to make sure it goes through. I'm just going to try and get a little bit in there. There we go. Oh, nearly pull through a bit more. There it is. So that's the um, chain looper. And then that's the only one for the lower part. Because um, with cover stitching, you've got the your three needle threads catching that single chain looper. So it's all about the needles now. Where you just go along from the blue, which is the right cover. So it's into the same port originally as um, the other needles, but then it does a slightly different path here. We're going to go right up to these um, little half moons that aren't filled in, and these are for the cover stitching section of the machine to get to these bits, the, this section here. So as we can see, you go over that, under the metal part, and over the right right cover section because these have all got their own different tensions here then going to put it into the uh, third one along and into that first guide there and then we can use our needle threader this is very handy at this point and again underneath the foot Same for the green, this is the centre one, so it follows the green path the same place until we get here but they all of the cover stitch um, needle threads are going over the same section. each got an individual um, guide right above the needle as well to keep them all very separate. Ooh. And the final thread which is our yellow which seems to have fallen out of its top guide. Which is our left cover stitch needle. all the way over to there, right down that left hand side and into the guide. Again, if we just pop all of the threads as per the picture, going underneath the foot and out the way, which I think is where they're sending them. Yes, underneath the foot, perfect. Get, grab my stylus again. So now we've I have actually threaded up everything. We can then press the tick on the um, screen to say we're, we've done all those threads. It's going to then ask us to disengage that air looper because we don't need that any longer. And then we've got our stitch as pictured. So you can pop up the um, table, which is going to cover that area now, and the door. And you don't, do normally do cover stitching on a stretch material, so we have got some kind of lovely lycra to give it a go on, just as an example. Let's get this going. So lower the foot. And so the settings might not be perfect for this fabric, but we'll have a quick look at, um, I'll just pull those threads out there. Oh, it's not too bad. Oh, it's coming out lovely actually. Let's just have a look on the back. Yeah, that's exactly as I want it to be, lovely. Now it does chain off as well. So 
we can actually just run the threads and you can actually um, just trim them off from there. Or you can finish it off using your little um, scooper if you are kind of finishing on and off the um, joining because normally with um, cover stitching you are doing a circular kind of um, hem. Um, but yeah, three thread cover stitch with lovely, lovely tension. So just to wrap up a bit on the, the new Benina L890 model, this is the combined cover stitch and overlocker machine and uh, where you can actually combine stitches together as well as flicking between one and the other. Um, so I'll just go through some, a few of the stitches that are available because it can do four thread, three thread and two thread overlocking, um, including the Benina super stretch stitch. Um, and all of these are kind of donated in here in that folder. We've also got the cover stitching using the single needle for doing a plain chain stitch, triple um, cover stitch, as well as the wide and then narrow left and right cover stitching for hemming. Um, and in the combination, we've got these five kind of combinations that are available again, using different numbers of threads in order to get a kind of chain stitch and the overlocking engaged all at the same time, which is great for really speedy dressmaking. One thing um, also to mention is um, because within these settings, as we've found stitching on these materials, we haven't really had to make too many adjustments and it does give you a lot of hints and tips as to um, how to set the machine up. But if we go into the home key, there is also the Benina Creative Consultant where you can actually choose a fabric and then it will automatically make adjustments within the tensions. Um, obviously you can override these as we saw on the screens, it's very easy, but it will give you the kind of default settings for that kind of particular fabric, especially tricky things like velvets and towelings. If we just go, we also, um, we're gonna to touch on the expert mode, I think I mentioned earlier on, but we felt it wasn't actually necessary. It, if you are in that mode, it basically means you can skip through that kind of setting up of the machine. It gives you all the information on the screen of exactly what to set, but it doesn't actually um, make you jump through all the hoops to do it. So, um, and if you are an expert, then I'm sure you'll be absolutely fine. So um, we now have the, obviously, the L Ooh, L890 Benina now on display ready to demonstrate so do give us a call if you would like to come and see it um, or you can just pop in we're ready and waiting to um, show off this fabulous machine and um, it really does offer a really great range of um, uh, techniques everything you'd really need for dressmaking I think it's absolutely ideal including that um, micro thread control that you get on all the other Benina range as well which is unique to these machines so you can make really really fine adjustments on so many different fabrics um, yeah so do get in touch and um, we hope to speak to you all soon bye for now